You're listening to The Journey Podcast. Ready to discover the incredible potential of scalar light healing and promoting holistic well-being? Listen to today's episode for all the details. Hi, I'm Petra Brunbauer, and with decades of experience with sadness, pain, anxiety, and stress, I finally figured out how to leave all that behind. And this podcast shows you how to break free permanently so you can reclaim your sanity and find the self-esteem and energy to go after the life you desire. With real talk about mental health, holistic healing, and the tough journey of coming out the other end. This is The Journey Podcast. Welcome to today's episode. In this fascinating episode, we dive into the world of scalar light healing. We explore the groundbreaking research and insights of our guest, who has dedicated his life to unraveling the mysteries of scalar energy and its potential for healing. We embark on a journey of discovery, delving into the principles of scalar energy and its transformative effects on our well-being. Throughout our conversation, we'll uncover the science behind scalar energy, shedding light on how it operates at the quantum level and its profound influence on the human body's energy field. Our guest's pioneering work opens new doors to healing possibilities, offering a fresh perspective on how scalar energy can be harnessed for holistic wellness. Whether you're a seasoned practitioner or simply curious about the frontiers of energy medicine, this episode provides a valuable insight into the fascinating world of scalar energy and its potential to revolutionize the way we approach health and healing. Tom Palladino is a researcher and humanitarian seeking to make a difference in the world by providing people with the education and tools to restore optimal health and by helping enhance their quality of life. Tom began research with scalar energy after developing a deep admiration for the father of scalar energy research, Nikola Tesla. He was also able to study the work of an inventor, Hieronymus, who continued research on scalar energy. Hieronymus' major contributions included unbinding the RNA and DNA bonds of microbes plaguing the agricultural industry. The existence of such energy not found within the electromagnetic spectrum fascinated Tom. Inspired by these findings, he pursued a course of study seeking to better understand and subsequently harness scalar energy through the development of an instrument called scalar light, which utilizes free energy from the stars. Let's meet Tom Palladino. Hi, Tom. It's so great to have you on the podcast today. I have been looking forward to getting to chat with you because the miracle of scalar light healing is such an interesting topic for today's episode. Welcome to the podcast. Petra, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I am very excited to hear more about this topic. I've been familiarizing myself the last few days, but I have to say, we need to talk about this and we need to hear more about this. So for starters, would you like to share a little bit about yourself and your story and how you came to do what you do today? You know, my story began when I was a youngster. I was reading about the great scientist Nikola Tesla. And that's what I'm working with, Tesla Energy, Tesla Science. If you will, I have in the background my scatter energy, my scatter light instruments. And with these instruments, I can do incredible things. So that is the key to my research. It's a new branch of physics, scalar physics. Wow, that sounds very intriguing. And I'm sure some of the listeners are familiar with Nikola Tesla and the Tesla coil and things that he was working on. So do you want to explain maybe what scalar light is for those listeners who may not have heard of that before? Simply stated, it's the energy of the sun and the stars. Now, why have I spent a career looking at the energy of the sun and the stars? It's free energy. It's clean energy. I envision a future in which we're going to use the free, clean energy of the sun and the stars. We're not going to have to drill for oil or dig for coal. I'm trying to advance this science, scalar science. And once it catches on, my prediction, it will just unfold and the world will be enthralled with the possibilities, with the great benefits to be derived from this energy. Yeah. 
Now I'm curious because we obviously spend time outside in this energy every day, during the day, during the night when the stars are out. How exactly is this energy harnessed for healing when we're already spending time in this energy every day? What's different about what you do? You're right. Well, I'll give you a great example. The brain, the mind harnesses scalar energy. What am I getting at? Anytime you think creative thoughts or you can compose music or you can memorize a language or perform a calculation, that's a scalar exercise. Thinking is a scalar wave. Well, I have an instrument that captures that energy. So if I can say that consciousness or your intelligence is a scalar wave, then behind me is a scalar wave instrument that captures intelligence. Wow. Okay. I'm going to take a few seconds and wrap my head around that because I find that very fascinating. When you're capturing these energies, can they then be re-emitted or programmed in some kind of way? Because then we have to get it back to the body in some kind of way. Yeah, you're right. So let me first demonstrate. Once again, working with scalar energy behind me is a miniature star. Now, if star can illuminate the world, the universe, then I should be able to illuminate a light bulb. So this is my scalar energy instrument that can illuminate a light bulb in my hand. That's the free energy that I'm speaking about. Energy that's so powerful coming off the instrument, I pass a light bulb close by and it illuminates. With that intelligence, I'll have an understanding that it provides some type of immediate environment. This is a scalar energy environment. How do I access that scalar energy environment? Through my photograph. The instrument does not work with people. I work with photographs of people. This is my photograph. Why do I work with photograph? Because my photograph allows me to visit my laboratory to, if you will, bilocate to my laboratory. So this is not a one-on-one -on -one physical session. It is instead a quantum session with the force field on a photograph. I work only with people's photographs. This is how this instrument works. We are now introducing a new physics to the world in which you can be in two places at once. And a scalar energy instrument allows you to recognize you in two places at once and to treat your force field on the photograph. Wow. I have actually never heard of that before. So that is certainly fascinating. And we already know that... The body is made of energy. We're all connected through energy on this planet and like the universe. So to pass this energy back and forth seems like a thing that has already been proven and accepted in today's world. So that makes a lot of sense that we can affect that energy then through the photograph. And does this have to be a special kind of photograph or can people just send in something they take on their phone or any photo? Most people will simply submit a photograph from their cell phone. Now, I'm going to give the audience an analogy. Petra and I are having a conversation through our computers. We are communicating through our computers. Now, if you can send, I can see your image, Petra, in my computer. Petra is not inside my computer. Now, when people send me their photograph, they're not inside my instrument. Their photograph, their image is inside my instrument. So if we can have a communication through Zoom, this is the new science. We're not working with physical reality. We're working with consciousness. Yeah. So people don't even need to be present and you can still work with their energy. Does this pose any kind of risk? So if people, for example, haven't agreed to have their photograph worked on, does this pose any risks for people? This is why on my website, I allow anybody to sign up for the free sessions, but they have to do it of their own accord. Mm -hmm. We don't take photographs for people. People submit their photographs to us. Now, that raises an ethical issue. You're right. In the future, now that this energy can transcend laboratory, their force field is on a photograph, their signature is on a photograph. It introduces a new science and a new way of looking at reality. Very much real. This is reality. I have to say that this is governed by unique laws. These are not electrical principles. These are, are scalar principles. Mm -hmm. So there probably will need to be some discussion around how this will be applied and used in future. Yes. Yeah, very interesting. Yes, thank you. What kind of possibilities 
do we have with this energy? What kind of things can we affect in the body? Are we just talking energetically? Like I know that you mentioned aligning the chakras, but are there things we can affect as well? Yes. And I'll make this clear before I explain. Anytime I work with this instrument, the energy does the work. It's no interpretation on my part. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to hold up a photograph. This is a magnified photograph of mycobacterium tuberculosis. This is the bacterium that causes TB. If I wanted to identify TB, tuberculosis, in a person, I would literally take these two photographs and introduce them into the instrument. So follow me now. The energy field of mycobacterium tuberculosis can be identified in my force field. If I had tuberculosis, if I had this bacterium, the instrument would look at the signature from mycobacterium tuberculosis, identify it in my force field, in my signature, and bring it to a state of chaos on the photograph. So if we can use this as a pattern body, then many people feel that this indeed will happen in effect with a person. Now, we can't prove that, but this is the instructions. The outcome, I have to leave that up to people. But bear in mind, it's the new way of looking at science in which you don't work in the chemical field, you don't work in the biological field, you work in the non-physical realm of consciousness. Yes. Does this work with, I mean, if we're talking cancer and things like that, would that theoretically work the same way as the TB pathogen? I think so, eventually. Eventually. I have great success. When I can take a photograph you see, a photograph has consciousness. When I can take a photograph of a microbe, this instrument will reduce that microbe to a state of chaos, cause it to cease to exist. So if we can correct a microbe, eventually we should be able to correct any medical, any emotional problem, disease, condition. Now, I'm not saying I can do that yet, but I'm theorizing that that would be possible. Yeah. And what kind of things do you need going forward to move towards being able to prove or measure this in some kind of way? First of all, we want people to register for our 15 days of free sessions to prove it to themselves, to have some type of a grassroots movement. Because I work alone. I'm the sole engineer, the sole theorist behind this, so to speak. So I have to present this to the world. Once the world gets on board, then we need testing, or at least we need to substantiate what I'm saying is true or accurate. And if people want to step forward and provide their testimony, that's fine. So we're still at the educational part. We're still trying to prove this to the world, even that this energy exists. Once we can have, if you will, a grassroots following, then I want to move on and have other inventions and perhaps be able to illuminate a building with this energy show power generation through scalar energy, the free energy of the sun and the stars. So we have, I'll slow down. We have to take this one step at a time. There's thousands of applications. Yeah. Now, Tom, this sounds like it has the potential to be revolutionary and to be life changing for what we know on this planet. Is there more research going on? Are there more people working on this? Or why is this not becoming mainstream? It should be mainstream. My work is unique because my instruments are unique. I work with a brilliant engineer, but besides this closed circle, I know of nobody with our capability, nobody who's ever reproduced this instrument or come close to this type of model. Now, I don't speak for the world. I certainly don't know what other people are doing in the world, but I'll speak for myself in this type of model, this type of engineering. Nobody's duplicated my work. You're absolutely right. This is a new technology that will change the social order. Absolutely, Petra. And that's where I want to go with this. I want to introduce this new technology that will change the world for the better. So thank you for saying that. You get the big picture. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it makes me very curious whenever I hear about new angles, new technologies and things that have already been there for a very long time, but have not yet made it to mainstream technology, mainstream health. So I'm always very curious about that. Now, the applications, as you said, there are thousands. There's the healthcare field, there's probably psychology, technology, very many different fields this could be applied to. So step one, 
testing. So you offer sessions on your website so that people can actually go and experience this. So what can they expect if they sign up for these free sessions? What can they expect? Okay. So every day for one hour, I balance the chakras. So let me introduce this. If this is my photograph, my photograph, my psyche enjoys that type of bright white light coming into me. And what happens when I have that bright white light? It balances my chakras. It will improve my memory. Many people say it makes them happier. It makes me happier. One hour a day, I balance the chakras. So what's the upshot? People are happier. Some people say they're no longer addicted to recreational drugs or alcohol. Others say that their depression is lifted. Now, bear in mind, I am not the animating force. The animating force is the light of the sun and the stars. I believe the animating force is from God, a divine energy. If that's true, then this divine energy is healing people, not me. The potential is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as you're holding the photograph to the machine, can you do several photographs at the same time so you can do these group sessions, if you will? Whether it's one photograph or a collage of photographs. Yeah. Today, earlier in my laboratory, I was working with half a million photographs. Wow. Mm -hmm. The instrument can easily work with five million photographs simultaneously. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. And the same that we use healing modalities like Reiki, for example, where the energy knows where it needs to go in the body or to the person or in the energy field. So that makes a lot of sense that I would just know in the photograph where it has to be placed. And how long does this take if, for example, the 15 days that you're giving the free sessions for, how long does it take to affect something if you're doing these sessions daily? Is 15 days sort of a good average? It's a good average. Usually within 15 days, two weeks, people feel better. As a new science, I have to rely upon the feedback of people. If this is a new cutting edge technology, nobody has duplicated my results. The only thing I can rely on, frankly, I have to rely upon people and how they feel. And that's what I do. This is why testimonies are so important. This is why we give away 15 days of free session. This has never been achieved before. The only one in the world with this instrument. So I have to be open-minded. I have to allow people to try it free. Yeah. And have you come across any adverse effects through scalar energy? Or is this mostly positive and geared towards healing? Or are there any risks that people need to be aware of? There's a very good question. There's no risk because it's sunlight, it's starlight. You cannot have an adverse reaction from the stars. Nobody has ever reported to me a chemical or been shown to produce a chemical reaction. Starlight cannot produce a rash or dizziness. This is really what I like about my work. My work is non-physical. My work cannot produce a chemical or physical reaction. Yeah. So this all takes place in our energetic body, so to speak. Yes. It has a different kind of capacity to affect us. Yeah. I like that. What kind of things have you heard from people that have taken you up on the 15 free days? What kind of things have you heard from them? Again, thank you. What have I heard? It's the testimony that counts. Here's a testimony from somebody that we worked with. One time, this person had a viral load for herpes. After submitting their photograph to us, this person no longer has a viral load for herpes. Here's another test result. This person was experiencing a herpes infection for over 30 years. After working with us, this person had a follow-up PCR test. There's no viral load. Now, invariably, what we experience from people around the world, here's another test result for somebody who had herpes, no viral load after being infected for years, for 30 years. Here's a test result for Epstein-Barr and herpes, no viral load after submitting their photograph to us. The only way we can prove the efficacy of these sessions is with anecdotal subjective testimonies. There's no measuring technique. You cannot measure this energy. So what's my point? Thus far, the test results, the testimonies are wonderful. We have 4,000 testimonies that have been submitted to us. I say we're on to something. I say that this is going to be a great benefit to mankind. But again, to be very clear, 
Nobody has this instrument. Nobody can measure consciousness, scalar energy. We've not been able to put this into a, what I would say, any mathematical formula. We've not been able to measure this energy. And there certainly is not data that we can quantify. There is no mathematical measurement. There is no basic unit for consciousness. Yeah, absolutely. I see sort of the challenge that you're facing with this. Now, is this scalable? And I mean, could you produce more of these lab machines that you have, these technologies, and you could do this on a larger scale? That's what I want to do. Eventually, if today my lab, I was working with half a million photographs. Eventually, if the world gets involved, I'll work with a million, two million, five million people a day. We will scale this, and it's just a matter of time that we introduce this to the general public. And again, to be very clear, I work alone, not by choice. Nobody has duplicated my results. So I'm the only one in the world who's promulgating this approach. Yeah. And you do this internationally. I would assume that you have people from all over the world that are wanting to try this. So you have international results? We do. Here's some of the results. This is a photograph from a clinic in Delhi, India. This clinic is called Om Prakash. This is the actual photograph that sometimes they send us of people as a group. Everybody in that group at one time was HIV positive. This is the Om Prakash HIV AIDS clinic in Delhi, India. After working with these people, if they had a follow-up PCR test, nobody has a viral load for HIV. This is one of the test results from the Om Prakash HIV AIDS clinic. This individual is telling us that they no longer have a viral load after this individual submitted a photograph to us. Yeah, that is fascinating. (laughs) I think it's fascinating. Thank you. We've worked with over 5,000 people. All of them are telling us that they feel better. But this begs, if you will, an investigation. This, I realize other people can't duplicate my work, but you should at least investigate why 5,000 people in Delhi, India, claim that they feel better, and most of them say they have no viral load. Well, it certainly makes me curious because what reason would they have to say that if it's not what they experienced? They're not getting paid for this. There's no benefit to them to say that. So it's very interesting that they had this experience and they have the tests on and that is what it says. So certainly I would say that when listeners are curious by now, which I'm hoping this has really piqued their curiosity, that they go and try the 15 days that you offer and see what happens for them and what kind of experiences they have in their lives and see what scalar energy does in various cases with whatever they have going on in their lives to see what happens and let you know about it. Thank you so much. That's the key to our work. We have to have people experience this. Anytime there's a new restaurant in town, you have to go to that restaurant. You have to eat the food. You have to experience the cuisine. You have to experience the atmosphere. There's many things in life that you have to experience on a personal basis. So this has never been duplicated. I realize what I'm doing is cutting edge. Experience it. Try the 15-day free session. Yeah. I'm a little bit curious, this machine that you have, is this a portable thing? So could this potentially come into health centers or clinics in the future? It's not portable. It's probably seven feet long. You can Mm -hmm. see part of the instrument here. Now, there are no moving parts to this instrument because I capture the energy. I'm not, if you will, creating the energy. I capture the energy. So there's no moving parts. There's no way I can place this on a plane. They would kick me off the plane. It's probably if I were to weigh this, it's at least 150 pounds, close to 200 pounds. And this is the future. I also want to mention something else. We have perfected a technique using photographs of vitamins or micronutrients. I'm going to show quickly. This is a photograph of the B complex. This is riboflavin, B2. And once again, energetically, I can, if you will, impart the energy of a vitamin into my quantum field. It's not a biological process. The energy of B2 is downloaded into my force field, not through electricity, through scalar energy, through my photograph. This is how I achieve my multivitamin every day. I don't take multivitamins. I don't eat multivitamins. I don't take a protein shake. I download the energy of vitamins into my force field. This is a new way of looking at reality. Yes, we have a physical body, but we also have a spiritual body. 
my work is non-physical. So I don't work with flesh and blood. I don't work with organs and tissue. I work with the spirit, the energy of the body. Yeah, it does sound like this is where the future is going. And as you said, a new part of physics, a new science that's coming along as well. I am very excited actually to try this and tell you about what happens afterwards. I'm Please. very curious at this point. In addition to the 15 free days, do you offer any other programs or services or courses for people who are curious about this? Yeah, I would say visit the website. We have different programs that you can experiment with. Here's one experiment that you might like. This is called neurotransmitters and endorphins. We're able to download endorphins into people. Now, if I can do that and I can send the energy of a neurotransmitter or an endorphin into a person, people are happy. And many people who experience this, taking alpha endorphin, sending it into my quantum field, energetically, this non-physical transference of energy into my biofield or into my non-physical spirit body makes people happier. Why? Because it's the energy of the endorphin. It's not the chemical that makes people happier. Yeah, and that makes sense to me, especially when we're talking about the energetic field and how we can affect that. We do use that in energy healing as well. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing that. This has certainly been a very enlightening conversation. And we will be linking to all of your offerings in the show notes as well, so that our listeners know where they can find you and how they can find the 15 free days if they'd like to sign up for that. And I do hope that we get to hear some of the testimonials and get to hear about what people are experiencing. I'm very curious. And I hope that they at least would like to give this a try to advance your efforts to do the testing and get some testimonials. Thank you so much for being open-minded to this. Again, I'm working with the laws of science. This is a scientific instrument. What I've achieved is repeatable process. So apparently I'm following the laws of science. Yeah. And nature and science has laws that function in the energetic field. We definitely know about that already. So yeah, I am excited to post this, to have this episode air, and I really hope that our listeners have enjoyed our journey into the miracle of scalar light healing as much as I have. I have learned so much in this past half hour from you. I've really enjoyed this. So thank you so much for coming on today and sharing what you have found and what you are exploring with our audience. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Yeah. Take really great care, Tom. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen in. If you enjoy the Journey podcast, please support us by subscribing, sharing on social media and leaving us a review. We appreciate you. And you can find more of The Journey on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and our website, thejourney.com. Sending you love and courage and see you next time.